Last time on Star Trek The Next Generation. You should have gotten a Mustang. With that name, I would have bought a Mustang. Oh, these are, that's what these are. Welcome to Rip Roaring Garage. I'm Alex, I'm a disabled veteran, and I don't listen to doctors, so I come out here and work and bash my knuckles, break my neck, break my back, and every now and again end up in the ER. Oh well. So, it's been a couple of days, and unfortunately, I'm still in the middle of figuring out this toolbox. We gotta finish the 72, we gotta hustle because I have, yeah. What I need is screwdriver, flathead, I think. We're gonna do the fuel filter, and then I gotta do electrical, and I'm gonna show you my quick way of banging it out pretty much from sitting in the driver's seat without even getting out of the car. Yeah. All right, so that's where we have to record. First, we take, oh, oh, this is not a good position for me, guys. Oh, come on, arms, work already. Okay, clamp out of the way. Let's do you, since we're already here. I'll put you up there. Bolt at the ready. There. Oh. Great. Now you out. Oh. And get you in there. Oh, there you go. Stay there. Oh, frickin' it. Next is... Uh, Wixage, same like with the 73, so. All right, let's get you lined up. Get this bolt out of the way. Ah, great, right on my freaking sleeve. Ah, get in there, just this once. I guess Laurel, I wanted her pound the flesh today because I'm bleeding. Let's get you back up there. Get you. Where the hell were you? Oh my god, you're like impossibly high hidden. Hello, tool cabinet. So the next thing that I know uh, that's bad is gonna be that connector for the license plate light. So we're gonna deal with that as soon as I make sure I find all my tools because I'm missing something. I'm sitting on it. I'm going to be dumping this uh, fuel. Don't want Mother Gaia coming after me because I don't know what I would do then. These are the seat covers, supposedly. The, um, let me put the brand, brand name up there. Slip and grip. Oh my God, I am like, freaking A, get over the headrest. Go there, just stay there. Stay over the seat too. Ow, hat. Da-da! Then we got the freaking shower cap, which, it's actually doubled here. These are the cheap Chinesean ones because the only ones I could find that weren't like $200 for 5,000 of them. And there is one more thing. Your shifty knob, which in my case, it's not that important because it's a, it's a chrome knob. Let's get in the car and do our inspection. All right. All right, so I got my little checklist here. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, obviously we still have like all the 
fluids and whatnot. My concern is to go over all the lights, but because my battery's low, I just try to start it. Come on, come on, you should have gas in the carb. Come on, girl, come on. Any day now, and come on. Come on. You don't want to work with me today, do you? Gave you a new filter. You don't like that. What? What's wrong with you? He's an addict to starter fluid. Drugs are bad. All right. Come on, girl. Oh, that was close. Good girl. What we want to see, we're going to be looking at all our little mirrors. So first, marker lights, check. Side marker lights. I'll zoom in. And that one you can't see much, can you? In the mirror, you have three and two, one. Huh? And in this mirror, again, three. And the side one is out. So we gotta place the side marker light. All right, now brights. Just the two on those, those are good. Then we can see in that one, uh, is that just one of them or? Oh, yeah, we got another light that just burnt out. So we got a bunch of lights in the back. See the blinky blinky? Headlights. Oh, this is gonna be a nightmare. The switch. Well, also let's check this. All my uh, dashboard lights are on. This switch, I replaced it with the standard and they suck. We're gonna use a little stubby. And there's a little notch under there that I'm using this stuff because it is tight. Where's the thing? Come on, buddy. I really don't like this switch. It holds there, because that's there probably 90% of the time where the leaks, where the headlight covers come up from. God, this is so annoying, and I cut myself. And now we're leaking vacuum like a sieve. Oh. So we have headlights, high beams, and that switch just went great. So we have a lot of stuff to do. The lamp, lamp light works. Let's just check the regular cabin lighting. Light there, buzzer, map light, light there. The two reading lamps. Our mileage is 09157. Gauges are working. Even the clock is working, but it's not set correctly. What time is it? 7 p.m. on the dot. Now I did the digital conversion to quartz. I did open the garage door. Okay, it's, I'm not dying in here. And now I have to do the light switch again, which even going in is a problem. Ah, see, it's still kind of sticking out and the little marker lights are still on, so. You see that? Here, let's do it like this. When I open it, that's like the marker lights, but I want to close them. So there's a little tank here. Uh, where are you? Oh, for the love of God. I have to move it a little bit to feel what's wiggling. Okay, there, right there. Uh, no, 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 I'm missing it. All right, it's off. She is a beauty. Let's check our windows. Uh. So, window just died. Well, let's get to work.
the license plate illumination light. It's a simple little dealy, you know, with the little typical 70s Ford connector. All right, so I'm back and it got really cold all of a sudden. I needed to get a bulb. So I went to the parts store and got myself a nice brand new 58 because that's what happened to this. As I was pulling it out, it just kaplooey everywhere and um, yeah. And also I scored a bunch of these. Yeah, these are like the Halloween light bulbs. The old school 1895s with the old amber coating. I got them for 10 cents, all of them. They weren't even in the inventory, so they just said, yeah, give it to me. You saw the original, and here is what I, yeah, nice brand new-ish. Uh, I wouldn't recommend painting here because that's part of the reflector. It's also galvanized there, where the rest of it is just steel. Did the same with this, and I will be putting up the part numbers right here. Um, this came off a of 73, so there might be some changes. All right, there is a part number for this that's separate from the cable. Now, obviously, I mangled this one all to hell. I had forgotten that this doesn't come off, this boot. To remove the housing from the top, you just undo the screw here, there's a tang here, and that's pretty much it. On my old one, it I couldn't, it was rusted in, so I tried to go through the under. Mm, that did not work. This goes through the top and through a grommet, which is this grommet, because the connector is on the inside of the trunk. There's a couple of screws that hold this uh, piece of carpeting in, and that's where we're gonna find that cable. These are your typical, no they're not. They're like a dashboard screw, but they're self-tapping. So there it is. Okay, so we can unhook that. There you go. And now we gotta pop this guy out. So pop goes, wow. No, no. This, ow, did I just cut myself? Oh, for the love of God, stop. All right, that's where it's coming out of. And now we can pull this guy out. All right, so you can go back up in here. Go there. I do see a little bit of rust, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna clean that up and dab it a little bit with some paint. So I got a little bit of rust reformer, and I'm just gonna dab around the hole. And that's it. So, popped out, and I'm gonna just... There we go. Nice and snug. Connect it back up. So now, I'm gonna check it on the car to make sure that the bulb actually lights up. That's one annoying thing about this is that spring is stiff. There we go. I'm gonna wipe some of this finger oil off of it. So, let me know if it works. Well, it didn't work, but why? It grounds through the bumper. And it works. So, we're good. I can uh, put these back. And you notice that I'm not using the power tool for this. I don't want to strip out holes. So, let's see. 
Common sense, the gasket, it's a little stiff, but it'll work for now. Uh, this has to go around the screw. Bulb goes in through there. So basically there's no gasket between the bezel and the bulb. This is glass, like actual glass, so you don't want to break that. Okay. That's nice. In case you're wondering, bag. I uh, paint, primed, painted with this silvery kind of paint, which is not bad, and put a light, uh, some clear coat on it. One. Any day now. I don't want to go too much. And now let's try the lights. All right. So next we're gonna do this bulb. Just a bunch of screws that are non-magnetic. Okay. A lot of them may be stripped, so be careful and be patient. All right, come on. hands are big. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. So in order to remove this bezel, I have to take the license plate out because it goes under. Now, yeah, be careful. You know, obviously you're supposed to do this, the plate first, and then you do the bezel. It is painted on the inside, which, yeah, could use a repaint. The bezel is interchangeable. This can go left or right. There's no directionality to it. Part number D2VB13449-AA. And now the tricky part. You are dirty. The lenses are directional. There's a left one and a right one. And I used to wonder why when they look identical, dimensions are the same and all that. The reason why is because the lens has a built-in reflector. You don't see that in cars anymore. Usually the reflector is separate from the house, the lens itself. This was super high-end at the time and still kind of is because I don't see these. I don't see this in cars, so. I know, I get excited about little crap like this. Ah, see, this guy is tight. And these are usually the ones that are pain. Ah, there you go, come on. Uh, this is gonna take a while, it's boring, so I'll see you when we open up the headlight. Tail light. Okay, and now let's see what we got. Am I missing one? So as you can see, there's this rubber, rubberized seal all around. Leave it, don't touch it. See, that's the reflective part underneath the outer lens. So even though it's just a piece of plastic, this is a nice piece of plastic. Oh crap. The light bulb unfused itself. So how are we gonna do this? Oh, the glass is spinning without the base spinning. All right, I'm gonna use this to push in on the pin. Without breaking anything. Yeah, that's a quick way to shatter things. You, you know what I'm thinking, right? So, Ziploc bag around the bulb, as far as I can get it. Well, actually that worked. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to shatter the bulb and then grab the base, but um, that'll work. And here's a good example, all right? 
a bulb that has both filaments intact, but this is what's happening. So obviously the base is staying, but the bulb itself is spinning, so the contacts are shot. And this is a 1157 regular. Oh, I got my light bulb case. Uh, let's see, I know I got one around here. That's a 56. Those are single filaments. Here's 1157. Long life. Ooh. Let's get you in here. No, 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 it happened again. The base just shifted on me. Please tell me I have another one. Well, I gotta go to the parts store again. So I'm back. I think what I did, I wasn't looking and I put it in the wrong direction. All right, there we go. I'm gonna wipe the bulb off of my greasy fingers. So I got my mirror so I can see it from the rear. And I also did something really dumb. I left it apart so with the trunk open with the light on and a weak battery. Okay. I'm a little OCD and I like putting the screws in the exact position they came. Now we're gonna start from the middle, going our way out like a head gasket. Might not help it, but it ain't gonna hurt it. And you don't wanna do these too tight. Just as long as the gasket bites and seals, it's good enough. Next up, put our bezel. What you can do um, after you get all the screws in, take a little marker, permanent marker, and dab them on the head of the screw so they don't shine too much. I don't want to thread these out. These are aluminum screws, possibly stainless, because this is stainless steel. Like much of all the bright work, this, 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 it's all stainless, which is why they didn't rust or pit like typical Fords and Mercury's. We got one, one more light to go, so same dealio. Remove, oh God, you are tight. Now this guy has another gasket under, it's connected to the bezel. So you gotta be careful with that. Which in our case, I guess stayed connected to the. Huh. I'm gonna try to gently pry it out. And you see that? This is very brittle stuff. So I ain't gonna touch it. And we got a 194 here. Just plugs right out. He busted. All right, we'll take this guy. Make sure he's good. Okay. Good filament. And shove you in. All right. Oh, slam it right on the light bulbs. Yeah. Prematurely closing your toolbox is always a good thing. Let me know if it works. So it's not working. Is it possible the bulb is bad? Very much so. So we're gonna take another one. And if this guy doesn't work, then something else is wrong. Yeah. Oh, no, there we go. In case you're wondering, I'm using these Sunoco 194s. They're ancient. <laughs> and I put these back like this. They do kind of notch up a little like that. So make sure they're straight. You put in one top one. There you go. Oh, uh, wait, that's wrong. I think the top one is the, sh the long one, wasn't it? One is slightly longer. Yeah, that's the guy that went up there. This surface is gonna be completely flat with the car. Why is it loose? Well, I guess the other one's a little loose too. And the gapping is not right. So we try.
Holy moly. <laughs> I have no idea if you're gonna see this, but up until this portion here, all right, it's thread. Here, it's just ribs. These don't go around in a spiral, they're just circles. So that foam gasket also act as like a, you know, puts pressure on it. I, I don't know. I'm being anal retentive right now, I, I guess, because this is hard as a rock. Now let's tighten you up without shifting the bezel or stripping the head. What a gap. When I look at the footage, I'll be able to tell if it is in fact the same as it was. <laughs> So, next thing to do, wash, air up the tires, and take her out for a spin. She's still a good car. Can't really go out with the old logo. So just in time, we got the new one. Ta-da! Okay, so we got our bad lighting, check. Tire inflation gauge, the standard Milton, and just because I don't trust their gauge, I'm using one of these. Also a Milton from 40 years ago. This, uh, this one's accurate. This tire was uh, on 15 PSI. Thirty-two, thirty-three. that's fine. And now to do this four more times. And hopefully the sun comes out. Just in case you wanted to know what tires these are, Kelly Navigator Gold 102S. They are from 1990. Let's continue with the wash.
my inspection and the helicopter's following me. Go away. Go away. Welcome. Welcome to Rip Roaring Garage. So, and then we gotta do my. 